This is Nick with Logos by Nick.com and in today's tutorial I'll be demonstrating how you can use your own signature as a watermark that you can place on your photos using GIMP. So I'll go ahead and get started here in GIMP. Uh, by the way, if you'd like to know how you can update GIMP's appearance with these new icons, I'll have a link to that information in the description of the video. So as you can see here on my screen, I'm starting out with a hand-drawn image of my own initials. Uh, so what you're going to want to do first is grab a sheet of paper and grab a pen and write down your signature or your initials. Uh, I, I don't recommend using your actual signature for, for legal reasons, but go ahead and write it down. Grab your smartphone, take a picture of it, then email the picture to yourselves to get it on your computer or whatever else you like to do to get the picture on your computer. Just go ahead and get an image of your handwritten signature on your computer and open it up with GIMP like you see here. That I've done, and uh, if if your phone is anything like mine, it's going to place the uh, it's going to orient the photo vertically instead of horizontally. So if this is the case for you, you could just go to Image, uh, Transform, and we're going to want to rotate it counterclockwise, flip it around 90 degrees. So go ahead and click on that, and there we go. So uh, the first thing we want to do is create a new layer on top of this. So I'm going to click this button right here that says Create a New Layer and Add It to the Image. And I'll just go ahead and, and uh, I'm going to choose transparency and then I'll go ahead and click OK. Now there's many different ways you can go about this. There's um, the really like quick and messy looking way and then there's the really nice clean professional looking way which takes a little bit more time. I'm going to be showing you how to do the, the, the clean professional looking method of creating this in this tutorial. Uh, the, the quick way would be to pretty much just go to um, colors, threshold, let me grab that menu. And uh, if you select the right, the proper menu, let me select the proper image, go to colors, threshold. And if you bring that over, you'll notice it turns, it, it, it separates everything between black and white. And you could just delete out the white area and just use this black selection. But I don't like using that method because you tend to get like these choppy pixelated lines here. And I'm, I'd like to avoid that. So what I'm going to do instead, uh, I'm going to click on this new layer. I'm going to manually trace over this using the pads tool to create nice smooth fluid lines like you saw in the thumbnail of the video. So to do that, let's zoom in over this area right here. I'm just going to hold control and roll up the mouse wheel a couple of times to zoom in. And I'm going to grab the pads tool which is over here. The keyboard shortcut is B. And I'm going to click right here to create a new point at the tip. Oh, let me undo that. Put one right there at the tip of the letter. And I'll just click and drag right here to create a line that curves along the contours of the line that I drew with the pen and just like that let go of it and then I'll bring the cursor over maybe over here and then click and drag again to create another line that follows up with that and again I'll come over here and do the same thing creating a line clicking and dragging and creating a line that follows that contour and then maybe I'll put one more line one more point down here and then I'll leave that as it is and then I'll come up here and I'll click and drag again and put this point up here like that. You may want to go back and click on this node and just alter this line a little bit. There we go. Grab this handle. This takes a little while to get used to uh, like, like how it all works and everything but it's, it's really not that complicated. If you don't like how it came out, like for example, I don't like how that last line came out. I'm just going to hit control Z to undo that. So I'll just undo what I just did there. I'll undo all of that and I'll just try again. I'll come right over here and maybe I'll make this a curved segment right there like that. I'll come up here, put this line up here, click and drag. That's pretty good. And since I want this to be a corner and not curved like these lines are, I'm going to take this handle and bring it back into the starting point right there. And I'll just come right here and click and drag and create another point. And that's the letter N right there. If you notice here, I'm using NS for my initials. You can go and click on these nodes and grab the handles and adjust the lines accordingly. I'm going to change that a little bit. And basically what I'm going to do now is I'm going to create a stroke of color that goes along this path right here. So up top here where it says black and white, uh, just flip that around so white is the foreground color. And I'm going to go to Edit, Stroke Path, and I'm going to choose from the stroke line, I'm going to choose solid color, turn on anti-aliasing, line width, I'm going to try 20 pixels. This will really depend on the size of the image you've imported into GIMP. For this image, this size, I'm going to try maybe something like something smaller, maybe like uh, seven, we'll see how that looks. Line style, make sure you click on this and choose cap style right here. We want that rounded join style. 
uh, we want that round as well. And then after that, go ahead and click uh, Stroke to see what that looks like. And if you want, you could turn off the visibility of this bottom layer to get a better vis uh, to get a better view. That actually looks pretty good right there. We got a nice fluid line. If you don't like how it came out, you can undo it by hitting Control Z. I'll hit it again, and then we can just try again, which is pretty much just edit, undo. I like to I like to just hit Control Z. It's faster that way. And if you don't like how it came back, you can just come back here and adjust the lines until it fits uh, nicely. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to Edit, Stroke Path, and I'm going to go with maybe a little bit thicker. I'm going to go with 8 pixels, see how that looks. Go ahead and click Stroke. And that's pretty good. I'll leave that just as it is. And what we want to do now is just come over here and create the letter S. So to create a new path, I'm just going to click off of the tool to get rid of that other path. And I'll come back over here and click on the Paths tool again. I'll click up here to start this point. I'll come over here and click and drag to create a curve right there. I'll bring this down here like that. Bring this down here, click and drag. Pretty simple. I'll take this one down here like this. Maybe I'll try that again. And you're gonna have to you're gonna have to undo it a few times because it's it's hard to really get the line how you want it to look on the first try unless you're like really familiar uh, with this sort of thing. I'm not really too used to using the paths tool in GIMP. I'm more used to it uh, with Inkscape. So for me, it takes me a few tries. I'll come over here, put this one right there like that. And that's pretty good right there. It's not going exactly along the tail of the S there, but it's, it's close enough. It looks good enough. Maybe I'll make this extend out a little more just to give it a little more character. And what I'll do now is, again, I'll just go to Edit, Stroke Path. All of the presets we previously used should still be there. Go ahead and click Stroke. And I'm going to turn off the visibility of this layer just to take a look at how this looks. Um, I think this could be a little more fluid down here. It seems to get a little little wonky down there, but uh, for the sake of this tutorial, I'll just leave it how it is. I think that's good enough. So I'll turn the visibility of this layer back on. And once we're done, we can click the Move tool. And if you notice, we have our signature right there. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn off the visibility of the, of the, uh, the uh, image down there. I'm going to press 1 on the keyboard to zoom out to 100%. Or actually, maybe I'll just hold control and roll down the mouse wheel. And what I want to do now is change the size of the entire canvas so it's the size of our signature here. So to do that, I'll go to Image, and I'll go to Auto Crop Image. And there we have our signature right there like that. And what you could do with this is you can save this. You go to File, Save As, and you could export. Actually, you know what? You can go to File and Export As. And you could choose to export it as a .png image, and it'll have a transparent background on it that you can take and import onto a photo you've taken, something like this. I didn't take this photo. I grabbed it from Pixabay, but this is just to give you an idea. Uh, this will give you a white watermark. If you want it to be black, you could just go to Colors, Invert, and now it's black. Or you could just make it any color you'd want. If you want to make it red, come up here and set your color to red. Click OK. Uh, Right-click on the layer and go to Alpha to Selection, and then go to Edit, Fill with Foreground Color, and that'll make it red. So I'm just going to undo that. I'll hit Control Z because I don't want mine to be red. I'll go to Edit. Uh, I'll go to Select None. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to place this watermark onto this image to show you how you can do this as well. So I'm going to go to Edit. With this image, I'll go to Edit, Copy. Then I'll come over here to our image, and I'll go to Edit, Paste As, New Layer. And I'll grab the Move tool, and I'll just bring this down here to the bottom right corner. And I'm going to want to shrink that down, so I'll grab the, uh, the uh, Scaling tool, click on that. And just click and drag this down. I'm going to hold Control to lock the proportions. And I'll scale that down about that small. The size of like a little watermark or signature that you, that you would put on a photo. Go ahead and click Scale, and there you have that. So that's how you can go about putting that there. I'm just going to grab the Move tool and move this over a little more. I'll press 1 to zoom back out. And there you pretty much have it. Now there's one more thing I wanted to show you. Let me paste this in here again. I'll go to Edit, Paste As, New Layer. Let's say you have your watermark over an area where it's like a really light background and the watermark isn't really showing through. I'm going to show you how to give it a little more visibility. First, let me shrink it down so that I can better illustrate what I'm talking about. Go ahead and click Scale. Grab the Move tool. I'm going to put this over here. If you notice here, you can kind of see it, but it may blend in a little bit. To fix that, what I'm going to do is I'm going to duplicate this layer. I'm going to take this, just make sure I got the right one. Okay, yeah. 
This is the layer right here. I'm going to duplicate that layer. I'm going to click on it and click the button right here that says create a duplicate of the layer and add it to the image. And then I'll go to colors, invert, and it'll make that black. And then I'm going to take this layer and just click and drag it beneath the white layer right there. And once I've done that, I'll go to filters, blur, Gaussian blur. And I'm going to change this to maybe five. See how that looks. Again, this depends. The values you should use here depend on how big or small your watermark is. For this size, I'm just going to go with five. Uh, just, just, I, I say five is usually a good starting point. You could always undo it and try again. Go ahead and click OK. And as you can see, it added a little, a little back, a little uh, drop shadow on the back there to help give it some uh, visibility from the page. And if you think it's a little too... Um, a, a little a little too heavy the the uh, the shadow you could just bring the opacity down up here and do something like that and if you notice it's a lot less visible with the uh, with the, the drop shadow is a lot less visible but the watermark itself is much more visible if I turn off the visibility of that you can see the difference maybe I'll bring the opacity up a little more to better, better illustrate it you can see the difference between the two really um, what I'll do now is I'm gonna click on this top layer where the white layer is and I'll just right click on that and go to merge down and that combines the two layers together so that the, the drop shadow and the white watermark are both a single unit and you can just click and move click and drag to move it around and you could scale it down if you'd like hold control scale that down put this over here oops grab the move tool oops I grab that you can move that into a white area and you can see it's still you it's it's still visible it doesn't completely blend in with the page there so uh, that's pretty much how you can go about creating signature watermarks for your photos uh, one more thing I could show you let me paste it again edit paste as new layer if you want to use it as a watermark that like covers your complete image like that but you don't want it to be too visible you could just place it there or you could just grab the alignment tool uh, make sure you have it the relative set to image and then click on the watermark and just center it up on the uh, vertical and horizontal axis. Then we go back to the move tool and I'm going to bring the opacity of that down so that the watermark is still there. You can still see it's somebody's copyrighted material but at the same time it doesn't really interrupt the image too much. So that should pretty much do it for this tutorial. That's how you can go about creating custom signature watermarks using GIMP. So if you have any questions, let me know. And as always, thanks for watching.